Hello and welcome back to our journey to the manger and today we're taking one more look at Zachariah's song the Benedictus but today we're going to look at how it is an example of the value and importance of salvation and salvation history. Now in the Benedictus there is a beautiful balance of praise for both what God has done and also the hope of what God will do in the future. The Song of Zechariah both begins and ends in the original Greek with the same word, episkeptomai, I'm sure I've pronounced that incorrectly, which means visit. So it's saying God has visited his people and will visit his people. That's complicated in tenses, both past and future imperfect, something that has happened and will happen at an unspecified time in the future. But that makes it all sound very complicated. So what is salvation? When I applied for the course in Pioneer Ministry, I was asked to write an essay on my salvation history. Now, I pondered this for a long time. Not because I didn't think God had led me on this path, but because I was unsure about the true meaning of salvation. I, like many Christians, believe that Jesus bought our salvation 2,000 years ago on a cross. But this is simplistic and missing so many facets of the comprehensive understanding that passages like the Benedictus give us. The classic Christian understanding of salvation history is that in order to redeem the world, God has indeed already intervened very decisively in history through the life, death and resurrection of his son Jesus. And yet at the same time that salvation is still to be made whole, made complete. So there's more to come, which will only be completed when God, Jesus, returns and completes all things, bringing heaven to earth as in Revelation chapters 21 and 22. Matt shared the anecdote that he once heard this described as being 3-0 up in a five series test match, i.e. God had won the decisive victory, but that there were still two games to play. If he finds that helpful, I'm sure others will too. I'm afraid sports metaphors are quite lost on me. The problem has become that we, in the Protestant churches, can focus so much on what God has done for us, sent his only son to death on the cross, that perhaps we don't fully see the ongoing nature of salvation. We therefore can lack a strength of hope and trust in what God is going to do. Never has that been more true than today. The ongoing fear and isolation caused by the pandemic has left many with a feeling of hopelessness. What do we hope God will do as we emerge from this? How will we know what we think God's hope for a new world might look like? We need to look back at these songs of praise and remember that they are prayers, conversations with God. We not be, may not be able to conjure such well-structured songs off the top of our heads, but God doesn't mind what we say, so long as we keep the conversation going. Prayer is a powerful tool in keeping our hope alive. Blessing God and thanking him for his involvement in our lives and discerning the paths to take to best fulfil his will. Luke's Gospel gives us a sense of this wider perspective in his birth narratives particularly with the praise songs given by Mary and Zachariah, the Magnificat and the Benedictus, which make references to Old Testament scripture and look to the future work of God through his son Jesus. This is also picked up again later when Simeon and Anna meet the eight-day-old Jesus and Simeon gives another song of praise, the Nunc Dimittis. Simon says, Mine eyes have seen thy salvation. He has seen Jesus and sees the hope of God in him. But he sees salvation not just for the Jewish people, 
but as Simeon says, a light to lighten the Gentiles, or salvation for the entire world. Something that the world needs to focus on right now. God has visited his people and will be with his people again, but is with us now and always. Salvation history continues to be something relevant for today and into the future, not just in the past. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.